Okay, so welcome to uh, the podcast panel. I'd like to give you guys a little bit of warning. We're kind of preparing for our midnight panel sugar rush already, so some of us might be a little wild, but um, I'm listed as the head panelist. My name is TJ, but this is really uh, Chaco's panel here, so I will let him take over. Yeah. Well, um, this is the panel. Uh, we have three of the uh, five uh, co-hosts of the award-winning podcast panel. You only won that award. I, I won the award because I designed this award and I got to take some. <laughs> but um, actually, this is our second uh, podcast panel of the year. Ahmed was actually at Babs. He flew all the way from Bahrain to uh, come to San Francisco and was at the uh, BabsCon uh, podcast panel. So that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So it's nice he's actually back to uh, be here again. Flavin, mm -hmm. Inky's going to be here with us. But uh, yeah, we have a... Uh, but. I'm not sure if they're allowed to do that. Like, is it possible? Yeah, we should do it. Okay, go do it. I mean, like, I, I, I like the fact that we're closed off, but people need to know that we're here. People need to know the fact that there's a panel going on. I think and our cool. special guest for <laughs> this episode of the Tumblr podcast is Cardi. Introduce yourself. Hi. Um, I'm Cardigan. I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard, but I used to guest on the GCC Grand Canterlot Cavalcade. It's a terrible podcast, but yeah, I enjoyed it. it. And that, that's not his real hair either. I'm so sorry if y'all didn't expect me. <laughs> I don't know where that's not his real hair. It's sad. It's it was sad when I learned that this was a wig. Hair. You didn't really have to expose him, you know. Okay, uh, let's introduce the uh, host of the uh, podcast. Um, I, uh, you might know me as Chocolate Pony or South Park Dowies. I run uh, Chocolate Pony and Firefly blogs. Give this guy support. Oh, okay. Love this man because he's made of chocolate. I love you, Chocolate Pony. Okay, thank you. And uh, actually, uh, Flavin and I kind of started the uh, podcast like in 2011. And then when we officially got it as a uh, real podcast, we invite TJ on. And. The, the, the reason why you w needed me on the podcast, <laughs> um, I have a radio background. I went to college. an award-winning journalist. I actually am. Not some fake Goldie Award thing. No. <laughs> okay, name hey, I wasn't, name worse your, what, name your I wasn't worse than what Leakfish did earlier. So, um, But um, my background is in broadcasting. I studied broadcasting at Western Illinois University. I was a radio news reporter for five years. I've won two awards from the Associated Press. I've hosted uh, congressional panels. I've talked to big names. So basically, I have the background and in interview experience that helps make the show legit. Not, not, I'm not saying that in a bad way. But. He, he also had a show on... We have the doors open, so people know that we're actually here. Okay, sure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Dude, it's totally fine. We're totally fine, man. We have plenty. Thanks for checking anyway. We're good. And then... Um, Thank you, Scott! Thank you. We love you for making this convention possible. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, uh, we're already getting ready for Sergeant Rush, if you yeah. can tell. Yeah. We hey, actually, I love uh, everybody here. we started the uh, Tumblr uh, pond panel because um, we, uh, Flavin and I were actually inspired by a, a previous Tumblr panel that was run by Ahmed and a podcast that was run by Ahmed and Captain British. And since they weren't uh, continuing their podcast anymore, we decided to uh, kind of fill that void. Well, to be quite honest, it wasn't really a podcast. It was mostly like an, an interview in series. An interview series, yeah. We, well, we. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Tetsuo. Uh, I'm going to be DJing right there because I need to Dude, what happens to your fro? <laughs> this is kind of how the podcast goes sometimes, too. So, Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry for... Tetsuo. He's so cool. <laughs> I'm sorry for interrupting your panel, but so one of your hosts just came out of the room and I've hugged me. I miss this man so much. This is awkward. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay, dude. dude. What's the panel? Podcast. It's for a podcast. That oh, it's for a podcast? Yeah, we haven't recorded. Is it, vid is it video? No. No? No. Uh, but it's audio. 
No. <laughs> so it's just for it's just a podcast to. Oh, I thought you meant if we, it was being recorded. Right. No, this is not being recorded. But why do you call it a podcast then? Because we can, it's called podcast for Tumblr Pond. Oh, 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 oh! I thought you said podcast. It, it is a podcast. But it's not being recorded. No. <laughs> that's like that's like you doing talk radio at a radio station with the power off. Who are you broadcasting to? There, there were days when I worked at the radio station where I wished that would happen, and it did. Okay, sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's fine. I, I I just I just don't get it. I don't get it either. I, I don't I don't care. I'm sorry. I, 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 okay. I, I don't get it sometimes too. Okay. Who are, who are you? Yeah. No, the one, the guy that looks just like you behind you. <laughs> you don't see that every day. Right? I, I've never seen that before. And Hannah. And, and Hannah. And Hannah. And, uh. Would everyone else like to introduce themselves at this point? You. Finning? Fearing. Fearing? That's your name? Oh, yeah, yeah, you. Okay. What about you? A Bailey? Bailey. My, my ex-girlfriend's dog is named Bailey. I, I, don't, I don't mean to insult you, but I love that dog. I love the name Bailey. Because I look, reminds me of... What's her name? Jenny? Gina. Okay. All right, what about you? Will? Do you have a... Do you have a cool name like, like, Fearing over here? <laughs> William. All right, I'll I'll work with that. And what about you? Okay, out of work derpy. It's it's a blog he runs. Oh, it's really good actually. Oh okay. Well, uh, well, you guys have fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get my stuff and I'm gonna hook up right there because I'm, yeah, because I'm I'm really bored, dude. <laughs> Wear I'm, the mask. Wear the, I, I don't, I'm don't wear the mask. Don't, don't wear the mask. I don't have the head on me. Right? Wow. You don't have right the right Surbot head on you? I'm, somebody told me that they made one for me. Really? Yeah, at this con. Hmm. Yeah. Shit, so. Dude, can I just say, like, I haven't really talked to you before, but I was there, like, at BabsCon hanging out with Gabby a lot of times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gabby. You, remember, yeah, yeah. you, you, no, I was, you interviewed me, didn't you? No. Actually, I was just I was just a friend of Gabby who was, like, hanging out there. Like, don't you work for no, I don't. Sorry. Uh, but uh, I'm just some guy who runs a blog on Tumblr. This right. is how the show goes sometimes, too. <laughs> way off topic. I was just like, like, what happened to your fro, man? You had a, totally had a fro during um, that time. You know, I, was was perfect, I, uh, perfect, I decided to just cosplay as Matt more today. Oh. <laughs> but either way, I got to split. I got to agree with my stuff. Have a good time. All right, man. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks friend. for stopping by, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, panel. I'm so sorry to die. Tetsuo is a good friend. He's a cool guy. He is. Tetsuo, enjoy yourself. You have a great day. You, you too. too. I will. I'm so sorry, guys. So, it, it's fine. This, this, this show goes like this sometimes, too. So, Mike has a question. What do you want? We're not doing Q&A yet. Where did we leave off? Uh, I think we're... Oh, man, so you're going to uh, talk about... Oh, no, it's Ray Ask Tumblr ponies at the end. Oh. Of the all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get some control back. All right, okay. all right. You were talking about your previous um, version of what this show attempts to be uh, with your Ask the Ask Ponies. Yeah. With um, uh, Dash. What our show was basically, we interviewed some of the Tumblr Pond um, blog artists who were going around, like, um, for example, Rai, who runs the Ask MLC blog, uh, MLC blob, sorry, <laughs> and uh, Adler, who runs the Ask the Pie Sisters, Will, who draws, oh, or Zach Morris, whatever, who draws the Ask Surprise blog and all that. But um, due to lack of interest from both me and Dash, we kind of had to stop, kind of like that. We do have like an unrec like, we have a recorded episode which we have not edited or uploaded online, and that was an interview with Giant Mosquito, who was the, uh, the mod of Ask Dr. Adorable. I believe I was on that one as well. Yes, you were Dash's replacement, and I really, really, really messed up during the interview because I was the main person who was interviewing. Well, the thing I remember about that interview was I was fired three days later oh. from my job. That was 
Yeah. Oh. That's how I met Flavin, one of the other co-hosts. Uh, we both got fired at the same time. So we all kind of knew each other beforehand. Um, and his, his show kind of devolved into or involved into what it is now. But we did more than just interview different ask blogs and different people in the fandom. We've also hit on numerous other topics. We had an episode where we interviewed some fanfic writers. Uh, we just talk about some issues that have happened in the fandom. Uh, and the biggest uh, episode that we've ever had, it lasted six hours one night. Oh, man. Uh, when I we talked that. about Sweet Apple Lakers Con. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Sweet Apple Lakers Con. The sweet, sweet you, meltdown of you, Sweet you Apple know, Lakers. I, <laughs> okay. A lot of um, stuff. I actually, I don't like to uh, boost our ego, but we, I think actually that was the finest piece of pony media journalism in the history of the fandom. Mm -hmm. Right when Sweet Act, we were just in the right time, right place. Right when Sweet Apple Acre Scon exploded. Wait a minute. Isn't that the convention that like kind of like died upon itself before it actually had any intention. It was, it was the convention that was scheduled for Nashville last July that imploded on itself the week of the convention and never happened. Yeah, because I remember there being like, they had a hotel and then it just like canceled. I think, yeah, the hotel kicked him out twice. Yeah, and then they like decided to get a new hotel that was miles away from the convention center. Yeah, and then, and then it just never day. happened. Then, yeah, let me, so let, let, let's I, talk I, okay, about I, Okay, yeah, I think you were right. Um, the hotel canceled, but there's a lot of drama beforehand. I think the original person who founded the con was kind of kicked out, so they brought in Obsidian Winter, and this is not being recorded. Um, <laughs> Do you actually think this is going to get recorded? I was about to say, are we being recorded? Because I feel bad for like, bringing up the topic. <laughs> okay, but as you guys know, the, every single con that Obsidian Winter has worked for has kind of, um, she has been fired from, and I'm trying to that because she actually does run the Goldie Awards, which I am technically her vice president for. <laughs> Look at the nice and fake award. It's not real glass. But I'm very proud of the design. We actually, she actually wanted to spend four hundred dollars okay, on per award. Uh, okay, get back on top. You serious? Okay, so um, what happened that was actually really big was some documents were leaked that uh, Everfree Network. I have a bad chair. I have found drafts badge. <laughs> you can talk about that. That's one. the fake one. Everfree Network. Um, well, if you guys don't know, Everfree Network kind of has a monopoly on a lot of these different conventions where they have exclusive Used streaming to. rights. And ironically, Con should be paying for, should be, should have these uh, people, if they want exclusive rights, pay them. It was just the opposite way around. Everfree Network was charging these cons to um, set up their audio equipment and do exclusive live streaming. So what happened is one of the uh, newer uh, Pony Media sites, uh, Ponyville Live, was really against this, and we're trying to reveal the relationship that Everfree Network had with a bunch of conventions. And around this time, I think Obsidian Winter was fired, and then a third new group of people were brought in. And uh, right around this time, documents were leaked that were confidential uh, contracts signed between uh, Everfree Network and uh, Sweet Apple Wakers Con, and they were. Uh, leaked by a person called uh, Snowden Pony. And then it just went down from there. That's when they found that the second hotel was not even available, and it just really went downhill. So... Yeah, no, I actually remember that. Because okay. Because I kept sitting around Tumblr, and the fact that, like, I guess it's on GCC at the time. Yeah. Like, they kept mentioning that. I was like, how the fuck does this convention actually... We, but... We but, had an episode that night, uh, that but, the Friday of yeah. that week, the night that the con was supposed to start. By coincidence, when, because you weren't able to do the podcast that weekend, we decide we normally do the podcast on Saturday night uh, afternoon. But did. we decided to do it Friday night so he would be able to have time to uh, record the podcast with us. And at first, I just asked Obsidian, since I kind of knew Obsidian from BronyCon, if she would like to uh, be on the, um, the podcast. Right after um, she was brought on, um, I think Shiva, that was her name, she was like the other uh, co-vice chair. That the, so Obsidian was the old person who was, uh, who was the, in the second group. Then we had someone who was from the third group who was brought in because, they said, well, we wanted to tell our story. So we had these two people originally planned. And then while we were interviewing Obsidian and her, we got a call from the first guy who founded the con to tell his side of the story. 
And at that point, uh, Silver Eagle from Ponyville Live decided, hey, I want to uh, have my uh, say. And then he started to, and then he joined the call. And then it got to the point where uh, TJ couldn't, uh, he interviewed as many people as he could. And then we actually ended up bringing Gendid on to, uh, from right. Derpy Hoops News to help do the last few interviews. But what was really unexpected was... And this was the capper of the night, pretty um, much. We, well, I, it's, we thought it was a cap until something else happened, but right at up to this point, we got in contact with Draco from Everfree Network, and he said um, Final Draft is on his cell phone right now, driving back up to Minnesota, and Draft would like to uh, join the podcast. So then we brought Final Draft in, and TJ had a long. I I know this it's a fandom and all, and I know we're not supposed to take this seriously and all, but. I grilled him better than a United States congressman for about 40 minutes. And we thought that was the capper tonight, but after that, Snowden Pony, who wanted to remain anonymous and initially did not want to join our podcast, was so pissed off with what with the BS that uh, Final Draft was saying that he decided to join the call, but anonymously. So he joined the Skype call and started typing in the chat. And Gendon would read out his chat as if it was a real interview process. And this was, like, Snowden Pony is known for leaking a lot of confidential uh, information within the fandom. And he never, first of all, Final Draft never makes public appearances, especially on a different network. Then we had Snowden no, Pony. No, we were independent at the time. Yeah, we were, but still, we, he doesn't do it outside his own network. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I take fandom shit so seriously. <laughs> I don't mean to, well, but it's just hilarious. This is going to get brought up. Anyway. No, like... Whatever fandom shit happens, it's hilarious to me because it's just like everybody's scrambling for everything. And it's beautiful. But I think I think the point we're trying to say here is it's not watching us or not us watching Rome burn per se. Oh, no, it's no. just this it's is what we this is we evolved from interviewing different people on Tumblr really to turning into kind of a serious news outlet, in a sense. And, and we just became this podcast where we just talked about what was hot that week, what was making news that Basically, week. Basically, TJ hijacked a show that me and Flavin created. And Pretty created much. his own entire new entity. <laughs> which kind of defeated, because Flavin and I actually wanted to do like an ironic podcast initially. Like, we would bring on someone, and they would talk about stuff that... It's not even related to our topic. For example, we would bring on Mike the Microphone, and we won't even talk about music once. Uh, we would bring on Alex Griffin, who wrote My Little Dash. We won't even talk about fanfics once. That's the type of thing we wanted to do, and actually, they would enjoy it, because Alex Griffin does not want to hear about My Little Dash again. Mike the Microphone has been interviewed so many times about music, he doesn't want to hear it again. So it's actually nice for them to actually talk about different it, topics. If I can be honest for a second here, this is the first time you've told me this. <laughs> I didn't know you guys had that plan yeah, for the podcast. Did. Yeah, that was well, the original plan. This, this changes a lot of things. Yeah, then. Now, now you understand why how we feel about it. Now, I, now I, I, I understand. I quit the show five times live because... Okay, you got the funny thing about TJ is he keeps on saying we are getting off track and that he should have more control over the podcast. He would talk straight for 20 minutes about ranting about this and sports and this. And then if we tried to interrupt him, it's like, hey, I'm talking here. You talk on your time. And he would continue for another 20 minutes just talking about his own thing. Flavin, who would have to edit the so, podcast, would have to cut out 40 minutes of just straight TJ talking. I've been out of radio too long. I need to get back in it. I think that'll help the problem. I heard uh, Fox News drop Glenn Beck. You could take his spot now. That was Two Thank years you. ago. Take it. <laughs> but Become Glenn Beck. actually, one of the funny stories Flavin told me was he would just go through the episode and listen to every single part of TJ Rant and cut out the irrelevant parts. But after a while, he would just randomly go to a TJ Rant, cut out a random point, and just continue until he stopped hearing him talking, cut off there. And when I started taking over editing processes, I, just, I did that too as well. Well, then. This, this is why we haven't recorded an episode in two months. <laughs> But the uh, but the sweet apple acre one was like one of our defining moments because we I had six raw hours of just straight interviews and and they got a lot of pop and then wow. we became the reference source like when GCC started talking about when all the other media networks started talking about they had to reference our show source because we were the first to uh, break the news on the scene. Um, Chaco, I don't want to interrupt you, but I think Ike has a question. Yes. No. <laughs> Actually, wow. if you if you go to um, 
the podcast.tumblr.com. We actually have some of our uh, older episodes there. I think from when we started joining Celeste Radio. And if you actually want to look at the pre Celeste Radio times, um, back when we were independent and right as we were bringing on TJ, they were on YouTube at Tumblr Pond uh, at, uh, at dot YouTube.com. No, it's YouTube.com slash Tumblr Pond. Should be. We, Mike? We, we, we reserved the name Tumblr Pond, so that's pretty cool. That's yeah, on Tumblr Pond, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's on Tumblr Pond if you want to look. Uh, the tum uh, Tumblr Pond on YouTube. Just Google <laughs> Sweet Apple Wicker Con or Tumblr Pond will be one of the first uh, search results there. So if you want to burn a lot of time, then you should totally just watch that video if you want to. But it's, it's up to you. Yeah. I, I put links to everything on there. Well, you have to if it's six What's hours. What's going on? We have a panel here, friend. Yes, friend. Dude, Hello. enjoy the Pony Podcast stuff. Oh, sweet. Hi. Enjoy with your giant sword. But honestly, all right, yo, quick, quick thing I need to say. I'm just gonna the mic. Sure. All right, to TJ and Choco, you guys should upload all of your old episodes on. If Tumblr. we can find them. <laughs> wow. We have some on Dropbox. We'll, we'll try to get like, them all honestly, I'm not even saying this. Like, why am I actually saying it? Right. But um, I know what you mean. G How did GCC does it? They upload all their shit. I know. On the Tumblr. I say you guys should just do it so everybody know. knows what the fuck you're doing. Actually, enjoy you know, yourselves. What's funny? Uh, Make it fun crap. About a few weeks ago, I think right before BabsCon, we got hate, our first hate mail oh, in yeah. um, in uh, the Tumblr upon uh, Tumblr page, and someone said. I've just listened to your show on Celestia Radio, and it's the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen, even to the point of a Tumblr podcast. It sounds like there's, there's like a fan running in the background. The microphone quality is uh, cuss word, cuss word, cuss word. It's so bad that I am going to see to the best of my ability that this is taken off Celestia Radio right away. And if a guy wants to waste his life trying to take a show that we don't even care about here, off Celestia Radio, here, we say, go ahead. Here's why it's not gonna, we're not going to get kicked off Celestia Radio. When we record a new episode, they'll just replay an episode from a month ago, even if we send it in on time. Like, it's like we got exclusive BabsCon uh, interview because I work on BabsCon. I was able to get the chair and the vice chair on right away. And this was going to be the breaking BabsCon news podcast. And they pushed it three weeks after BabsCon. Yep. Yeah, so. Like, honestly, All right. I mean, like, it, honestly, the episode that I've been on GCC. And Defmic has been in his, um, like, if none of y'all know, and Defmic usually records his, like, parts of the episode while he's um, doing his job, like, while he's parked on the road, like, doing a truck or some shit. Okay, can I interject for a second? Yes. Well, we had them on our show um, kind of two weeks after that uh, big Sweet Apple Acres Con episode. We had him, Defmic, on it. Yeah. And he... Was it truck driving as well? Yeah. He was also going to the bathroom and doing his dishes while recording. Wait, he has dishes in his truck? No, when he got home. Oh. I'm sad. I'm sad he has a home because I thought he lived in his truck. No, he, 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 we clearly heard him use the bathroom. That is disappointing right there. Because, like, you know, honestly, honestly, every almost every episode I've you been on with on those him. guys. I'm, I'm no, like with every episode I've been on with him and, and bullshit. Um, yeah. Before Jay Hook actually quit, and um, and Defmic, and Defmic's usually been in his truck, like mostly just chilling there on the side of the road. It's just like, this is the most unprofessional shit you could actually do. To go back to the Sweet Apple Acres thing, that's oh, kind of what that. uh, Final Draft did too. Uh, yeah, he was on his. He was driving back from Nashville all the way to Minnesota um, on his cell phone, which was. It, the fact that he was actually thought it was important to call us at that point. Was he was big. driving on his cell phone? Is that like a new car brand or something? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, so basically, where we're at today, um, how, how would you describe it? Well, all of us are. Oh no, okay. Um, wait, can, I, let, can I please. Wait, wait, no, what you going to No, let, no. Let, let, let Chaco go. Actually, I'm curious now. What are you going to say? No. Okay. I, I want to tell a little story real quick, but Choco, please finish. Oh, I was just going to say that um, because of time commitments and different situations, um, TJ now finally got a job. He was unemployed for a majority of the uh, podcast time. I'm a busy uh, med student at Johns Hopkins University. Flavin actually now has a job, and it's usually busy with family. So it's very hard to get all three of us on 
at a podcast at the same time. So we kind of did splinter off and form different groups. I, I, for a while, I was uh, actually doing a podcast with Ahmed Zizola, a co-host from the Ask the Tumblr Pony podcast, Captain British. We were doing a Doctor Who podcast. And then I also did um, a brief podcast with Mulp of Ethno MLP. And you got a lot of hate for that. We we it was it was fun. we basically it was supposed to just be a, a satirical anti brony podcast, and then we eventually evolved right. being an attack on Scientology. So, um, speaking of Ethno My Little Pony, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but that website like that blog is no longer Ethno My Little Pony. I'm not. It's surprised. um the wild uh, the wild web I believe. It's not just co- it doesn't cover pony stuff anymore like how we used to, but now it covers like pretty much everything. You know the ironic thing is she actually made that because she was actually very angry with bronies but she started seeing the social justice warriors and the anti-bronies and she started hating the anti-bronies so much she actually joined back to actually actually like a lot of people thought like uh, a lot of people actually would criticize our podcast for being an anti-brony podcast but we were actually pretty pro-brony she was actually arguing to me the points of why the fandom is so good compared to these haters and it's ironic coming from a person who initially joined the web because she hated my little pony fandom. so the lesson here is Social justice warriors are evil people. Give me the microphone. Okay. So, I'm not sure if any of y'all know, but um, I used to be on GCC. And can I tell a story? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel so bad about telling the story, even though I'm like, I'm a hell of a guess on this panel. But um, if any of y'all know, uh, Pip Tart, Dana, um, Dana. Yes, you know her. You know her. Who? Yeah. I brought her onto the GCC. Who is that? She is a, she's a lady, she's a lady friend of mine who runs a Fluttershy blog who does not do so anymore. But she's basically the embodiment of Fluttershy. Shy, quiet, super... Like, Why would super you bring her on the GCC then? Because I was told to like, bring somebody there. And she was basically welcome with open arms. This is going to end badly. It is not going to end badly. <laughs> hush your mouth, TJ. I love you, but hush your mouth, please. Oh I love you, sweetheart. <laughs> No, but basically. Hey, first suit, go hug him. Oh my God, first pink pie, first suit. <laughs> no, okay, but basically, if any of you, on, if any of you guys know Pip Tart, um, she's basically a really shy girl. She's, she's um, a really sweet girl, but yes, yeah, she does. Deirdre, Deirdre is a really good blog. She's a really amazing person. Deirdre, Deirdre, D E I R D R E. Yes, yeah, she is very tiny. Basically, I brought her onto the GCC pod pa- pod- <laughs> podcast because she's a best friend of mine. And, like, I brought her on one day because the, the cast of it and Death Mick and Bull, she were like, hey, just, like, bring somebody you know. I was like, all right, I'll bring somebody I know. And basically, she, like, around, like, these people who are, like, just really, like, Really awkward, really um, nerdy and shit about MLP. She she enjoyed them a lot, but in the end, she talked to me, and it was just like really awkward to her because she didn't know how to react. And God damn it, Trump. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Take it. Take it, please, Ahmed. I'm so sorry. If I, had, if I had a song to choose right now, it would be Drunk Again by Real Big Fish. Fuck you. <laughs> I think we're ready for audience Q&A. I, I do. You don't bring your friends onto an NSFW podcast. I do want to apologize. This is like our third panel of the day. Oh, it's my third panel of the day, so a lot of us are very, very tired. A lot of us have been uh, vending. We got but one to go. If you Except actually do have some serious questions about the podcasting Please process, do. if you want to start your own podcast, feel free to ask. If you want to ask about the history of our show, feel free to ask. Any other questions about the state of Tumblr right. Pond, the state right. of fandom artists, feel free to ask. Oh. Sure. Oh. So, right now, what kind of course Bad. I, Wait, what? I, my recording equipment, I just use a live, I record based off live stream, and I have my computer built in microphone, and I don't use air plugs, so it reverberates and echoes. So it's not the best, that's why the guy wants to get us kicked off Celeste Radio with all of his power, because he doesn't like that. I have iPod headphones, that's it. Mr. Professional. I, I, I think I'm like, yeah. sorry, I'm poor as hell and can't afford a Blue Yeti. Marry me! No. Okay. Hey, Glenn Beck has a chalkboard, okay? I'm sure he could afford that. Um, I think, I'm not sure what Flavin uses. I think he uses a condenser microphone as well. He, and he uses a, a, a MP, MP3 Skype recorder as a, as a recorder. 
it's yeah. Well, when it comes to microphones, I think I'm the only one who has like the uh, the more professional microphone, and I own a Blue Yeti microphone. That's like the studio yep, it's like the most affordable one. It's like really, really good. Yes, Mike. Just do it. Just do well, it. Well, just do it. No, 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 no. Wait, just, I, I, okay, I know what you're saying here. Find your friends. Find an interesting topic and just do it. Don't worry about what you're going to cover now. Just talk about stuff. But there's there's some other things. you got to have good chemistry together. Like, we bicker a lot. We don't have the best chemistry. I'll admit Which that. Which is ironic because we are basically share I view on, like, politics, philosophy, like, almost everything. We're 90, like, it's only us. In the whole entire fandom, I share a lot of similar views, but we argue the most. Which is you should talk to Top Hat then. I don't know, guys. Arguments are actually pretty fun in Top Podcast. I, I, chemistry, what? Because, like Chaco said, there's a lot of egos that happen. There's a lot of budding that happens. You've got to have some good chemistry and be able to work together. I think some of that can be chalked up to us doing this over Skype calls and not being in person. Actually, that's what I noticed when we did the uh, panel, uh, the podcast panel at the BabsCon. It was very successful because we could see each other. We could see when we need to talk. And I noticed when um, you guys were recording at, uh, you guys uh, actually, uh, M. Bullshit invited you on the, uh, I think, the GCC after the con. That's and right. Watching, the, watching all three, you, Flavin, and M., just talking back to back. You guys knew when to stop talking because you were there in person, so you know it was a natural reaction. Can For Skype, this is impossible to do. Can I just talk about the, uh, the recording we were doing? Sure. In the let, let, me, let me add something to Chago's point first. When you're on Skype calls, you can't tell the facial expressions. You can't tell hand gestures and such to know when someone is still going or trying to wrap up and such. That too. It's very hard to tell over the internet, even on a uh, voice call, if someone's joking or not. So you've got to have good chemistry with the people that you want to do a podcast with. Like the five times I quit, three of them were joking. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm going to keep going. Okay, um, let me just talk real quick about the uh, the recording we did for well, the recording we did for the GCC. Like, um, it was like two parts, but we did the first part in the Babscon Hotel. Basically, it was me, Flavin, and M Bullshit. We were sitting in our room, and Bullshit has soundboards and a few microphones, and it was just tangled up wires. Each one was like sitting in a bed with a drink, and we just started talking. And here's the thing when it comes to podcasts. Okay, as they mentioned, you gotta have a good chemistry, bad or not. It depends. Maybe you like having arguments, maybe you like just fooling around or well, stuff. It, even if you argue a lot, that doesn't necessarily mean you have bad chemistry. Uh, chemistry means like. Me accidentally jumping all over him. Yeah, like look at uh, look at those uh, debate shows like Handy and Combs. They they debate all the time, but they actually kind of have good chemistry when they do the debating process. And sometimes, like you said, uh, have your friends. Sometimes friends are actually not the best people to have for right. a serious that thing might because be true. a lot of friendships have been ruined by such things. Uh, for example, Flavin's a really funny guy, but he does his jokes over and over again. Or when TJ does his funs over and over and over again, they become a bit annoying. Um, yeah. Well, at the same time, it's good to have TJ's uh, professionalism to kind of structure the podcast. But if he basically acts like a drill sergeant each time, it's not going to be fun either. It's going to be more work instead of fun. So you have to find I, that perfect balance. I would say it's more air traffic controller than drill sergeant. <laughs> but the, overall, once you have everything you need, just just do it. Just start doing it and don't think about like... Uh, what, what if people don't listen to it? I mean, you're going to be doing it for fun. It's not going to be something that's going to be like, oh, I'm totally going to try making money out of this or something like that. Or, oh, okay, what we're going to do is like, we're all going to go in this one secluded area, room or something that's going to be completely soundproof. There's going to be like foam everywhere or stuff like that. And just sit on a little table with professional ass microphones that cost maybe $1,000 or something like that. No, no, no. Just get your friends or no, whoever you want to do a podcast with and just do it. Record, upload, yep. done. Like what you said, don't worry about money, don't worry about popularity. You know how much money we made doing this podcast? Not Absolutely zero. Negative five dollars because I paid for a new microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about, if you want to do a brony specific podcast too, 
there are hundreds out there. You have a big C to compete with. And it's not always about competition, though. Well, the, and there's probably only maybe f- two, three podcasts in the fandom that are really good. Uh, so just don't think about trying to be the next big thing or anything like that. Just go out and do it. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then you're just still having fun. Um, it, like, this is like the main point. Just have fun. Yeah, have fun. And like I think what TJ was saying, you guys know the Burnley fandom is, it's, it's one generation of one show of one franchise. It's a small, small amount. You're not going to get that much information. The only thing we could basically do is just try to dig up drama each week, and that's not really enough. Mm-hmm. Even when Mulp and I started the uh, Four Horse Ponies of the uh, Brony Popcolitz podcast, we, didn't, we only talked like the first 10 minutes about MLP fan news. The rest of it was a completely different topic. Like the first episode, we completely talked about Scientology. Second episode was on North Korea. Third episode, we brought. Uh, Can I just Pastor interrupt Chaco you for a second, Chaco? What? Did you seriously find a Church of Scientology in Columbus? There is. Okay, if you guys. He did. Okay, you guys want to read about the great Lord Smooth oh, and. Oh, goodness gracious, you Chaco. You want to read the works of L. Ron Hubbard. Actually, there's a Church of Scientology one block down, and uh, just don't take the free personality test because it's a cult and they're going to induct you in. Look what they did to Tom Cruise. Five to one odds, he becomes a member of Scientology. Who's taking the bet? Yes. I, I am actually a big fan of South Park. Like, South Park is my favorite fandom and the one I love the most, but actually there's another layer to it because what South Park show kind of made everyone think Scientology is funny because they believe in aliens and that. When I started digging deeper, I like when I was talking to Mulp on our podcast, there's actually a much scarier thing. They have a process called disconnection, where they disconnect families. They have their own secret military unit called the Sea Org. What's the most scary is that they're the only group in the United States with a secret concentration camp in Southern California. They have, if you Jeez. Google this on Wikipedia, they have, there's, a, there's a place called The Hole. It's a concentration camp with barbed wires facing inwards, and any executive or member of Scientology who tries to talk out, they send them to this little put hole it's a basically a trailer park. They sleep on the floor, eat nothing but slop, and they have to do work. One person who used to be in charge of the biggest ship, L. Ron Hubbard's personal assistant, she was put in a trash bucket naked with a sign that says, I'm a lesbian, and sprayed with cold water for four hours. And this is a real serious issue. They have human trafficking things. There's, so it's funny because they believe in aliens, but they actually are a criminal organization that does a lot of scary stuff. You guys didn't know that, did you? Any other that? questions since Chaco brought the mood down majorly? <laughs> Please ask what? something. How do you all get into the oh, that's a good question. Um, who wants to go in order of who joined first? I joined March of 2011 because I was watching the NCAA tournament and I was on pony chain in between games. Uh, that's it. Oh, that's- oh, I haven't... Um, I got into ponies when I saw like the whole pony craze was going on on the internet, and at first I saw it was like, are people really serious? They're watching like My Little Pony. It's like, ah. but during the time, like I was not in the greatest state, like in my life, like I was completely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh hey, the party boy's back. Hey. But, what's up? Oh, I just called one. Oh okay, that's cool. Anyway, um. So I said, like, you know what? I've seen some friends who are wearing My Little Pony. So, okay, I'm going to check it out. And I like the show. It was back in April 2011, if I didn't mention it already. I... What? I know, what'd you get Actually, it's interesting because a lot of people we interview, there's one of the common questions for most Pony uh, podcasts is, how did you join the fandom? And... A very similar topic comes up. Mostly people who join the fandom or college-age students born in the 90s, which a lot of us are, and a lot of them are currently in college. A lot of them have hit that run in the life where they're going through a big change in their life, questioning their situation, and just need to find some form of comfort and escapism. So it's actually very interesting to see a lot of fans jumping on for that point. I think it's kind of the same as me because I was at Johns Hopkins, which is the number one most depressed school in the country, especially if you're a pre-med student. But I actually found MLP because I was just so bored at Johns Hopkins one summer. I just watched every single Powerpuff Girl episode. 
And after I watched all of them, I was like, okay, what are these people doing now? And I realized, oh, they're working on something called My Little Pony. I thought this was a joke. And I actually wanted to hate it. Like, I wanted to hate it as much as Justin Bieber, <laughs> Twilight. So I started watching it because, I, okay, I, it's fair. I can't critique something unless I see it. So I watch it with the intent I'm going to make fun of this thing. And I actually watched a bunch of anti-brony videos before, um, a lot of anti-brony articles. And then I watched, watched the first it. episode, and I was like, this is actually pretty good. And within the first five hours, after I watched like the first season, the first thing I did was jump on the first bus to Toys R Us and bought my first Fluttershy toy. So, <laughs> so, so John Hopkins has the most depressed students in the country. Number one and also no, uh, number third most suicidal school after uh, Cornell. So I guess it's not going to be called John Hopkins then? It's not funny. <laughs> You know how many people die a year from Jones Hopkins? And you were University? ragging on me earlier for that little joke about riding, like driving on the phone or something. What? You made a joke? If you guys no, the don't listen through the mind. podcast, you'll know he makes a lot of horrible puns. In fact, every time, actually from now on, every time he makes a horrible pun, we should just ding, ding the bell or something. I have the. We, we, we need a bell, dude. We need to have the little bell that that dude who had a stroke in Breaking Bad has. I keep forgetting his name. Uh, all right, who's got a question? We got eight minutes a left. Any questions? Um, I, I think we should do uh, because we kind of ended on a random note. Like we technically didn't finish the podcast, but it's technically not continuing. I think we should do a few wrap up episodes. I was disappointed we didn't do a season four wrap up yeah. episode. That was a big thing planned. Twilight, Twilight guys. guys at the end. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Why Lars? Why Lars die? <laughs> but you know, Pinkie Pie is a new element of magic, and she's going what? to be. She's Pie, she's right? now the princess of pirates. So it's interesting. The idea of Jack disgusts me. <laughs> Just a reminder: we're all getting prepared for sugar rush as well. Uh, Baja Blast. Any other questions? I Anyone? Fuck you. You guys look like you're terrified in the back. <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> Because most of the people here are our friends, so we're just curious what, what drew you to this panel initially. Has this place scared you yet, Sewer? Oh my gosh. Exactly, that's my first no, reaction too. Trust me, it has scared me at times as well, and I've been to Phantom since 2011. Oh. I want to say something as well. I am pretty scared as well because, especially since I'm a foreigner, and yeah, you're from like he came all the way. But right. but you're a king. I'm not. Oh God, let's let's let's. You're my royal sultanate in uh, Bahrain. Is He's that got correct? all that oil money. Oh. Three Emirates he owns. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> ah. ah. I like you. He actually has a... Yeah, that's true. No, trust me. I've been in the fam since 2011. I've, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Yeah. I, yeah. Wow. Okay, thank you for handing me a mic after all this time. <laughs> yeah, no, like I've the, been in the fandom since the beginning. It's just like, it's still confusing to me because I don't know what's happening anymore. Nobody knows what's happening. Yeah. No. Ever since Let season four, I feel like I'm like the 30 year old in the group of four. Well, a lot of people are feeling a good high after this past season because it was a really great I season. I really want to watch it because I liked Applejack's song in the Flutter Bat episode. The damn episode. Anyway, um, it was hella cute. The one thing I've learned about this fandom. Don't ever say it can't get any worse, because it will. It does. It will. Trust me. It will always get that worse. We, if you thought Derpy Gate was bad, no, something worse is gonna happen. What the hell is Derpy Gate? Fucking no, it sounds like a gay when someone Oh god, no. I don't want to imagine that, man. Derpy Gate was when in It was a joke. The it was a joke. I know, I know, I know the whole derby. Next day. question. <laughs> and on a uh, for a note on uh, yeah, MLP fine, fans and bronies, what's interesting is I kind of like the idea of most, like we said, most of these people are college age students down their life to realize they aren't going to succeed, and so this is a great way to actually inspire them. And actually, if you look within the fandom, there's been some of the most creative talents, people who have actually been down their luck. They create some of the most amazing drawings, music, videos, and a lot of them have actually went on to work in the professional industry now. Not just ponies, they're working on a professional TV show, cartoon shows, video games and stuff. And on the show itself. It's on, the, on the show itself. So it actually motivated them to do something. 
But on the other, so I see MLP as a great source of motivation, but the dangers is when something that's supposed to be a stimulant becomes a depressant, and that means it becomes a form of escapism. So when people enjoy ponies to the point where it becomes their life, and that becomes dangerous. Ponies Terrifying. should kind of jumpstart your life, give you like a new view and source of motivation, not become life itself. And that's when it becomes dangerous. With almost every fandom, Star Trek fandom, furry fandom, all that. You know, I, I wonder something um, about the name itself, because the name Brony is so polarizing nowadays. And I just wonder it, if it's as polarizing as in other fandoms. Like, are there major wars over the word Trekkie or similar words? It's interesting because uh, there's, a, there's an elite fan of Star Trek fans who call themselves Trekkers because they feel themselves more close to the original show than the mass fan, massive fans call the Trekkies. And what was ironic was the person who created the show, uh, Gene Rothenberry, he was at a Star Trek convention and he started addressing the crowd as Trekkies. And one of the Trekkers was like, it's Trekkers! And he's like, I invented this show. I could say what, I could call, well, call you guys what I want, so. So, uh, any final questions or thoughts from anyone? Anybody? This is the final question, really? Well, it's like 1047. Would you like to ask me a question? Last words from our special guest. Oh, well, I'm thankful it was like fucking hell, except like for Choco and TJ and Elvis for actually having me on. I mean, I've actually never really held a, like my own podcast, but I've still been a guest. So I guess this is a guest appearance. I bless them. This, this is his first precious. time on the podcast. <laughs> They're my friends. I just met Choco right now, but Elvis I've known for a year. Mm. No, two years. Since 2012, bless him. Is Cardi's gonna try and main. steal him from you, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Hannah, really? Wait, I love you. I love you. Can you? You can have him part time. <laughs> you can have him part time. I uh, cannot believe this. Break, like 12 hours in a day. I want to go home. You're never going home. Well, I yeah. think we should uh, end Never. this panel by having everyone come up and explain why Rainbow Dash is best pony. So let's form Thank you party. all for <laughs> joining the Pond Tumble Pond cast, but not Pond Tumble Pond, the podcast panel. Okay. And I really hope you enjoyed the, pa uh, the panel, even though we didn't really do much. And, and I am terribly sorry if, like, we offended any of you up here, especially with the uh, the cussing and everything, because. We have someone who's kind of... We're basically apologizing to these two, right? Yes. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. <laughs> we, have, we have an intoxica intoxicated man right now. Yeah, we didn't even like know we said, we were going to be here until like last five minutes right before we started this thing. So. Like we, we're getting ready for uh, another panel in about an hour. So, All right, so uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, thank you for putting up with the uh, random insanity that we have here and enjoy the rest of the con and if you're 18 and over come to sugar rush in an hour again i am terribly terribly sorry <laughs> I, I kind of feel bad really i really feel bad i'm I, sorry i think we should all have a group hug and hug it out then I'm good. If, if you are feeling a bit depressed we are uh, this pond this panel has been brought to you by the church of scientology which is two blocks down that thank way thank you for joining get a free we'll object test time. and get a book by Elron Hubbard. I'll go get the first suitor. Thank you. Thank you.